Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today. And you may think after uh, six or seven hundred ancient history videos, I'm running out of subjects to talk about. And actually, it's the opposite. I've got too much on my plate and not enough time to deal with them all. But today, I wanted to take you into a site in Egypt. And this place is called Yer El Medina. And this is located in the Theban necropolis area by present day. Luxor, and this is actually a village that the workers lived in. And here, as I back up, here's the Luxor temple over here. And just across the Nile is the workers' village. And they constructed the tombs in the Valley of the Kings, which is located just over the first set of uh, mountain peaks here. There is the Valley of the Kings. And out here, is Dier El Medina and I think this is a pretty cool area just because some of the tombs in this area and let's just go over here and just take a peek at what this looks like and uh, these are the remains of Dier El Medina and they have what is called the tombs of the nobles in this area and we are going to take a look at a couple of these tombs today and I think they are located right up in this area here. Now, the first of these tombs that we're going to look at in this area called the Tombs of the Nobles is this gentleman here, and his name is Senegem. And he was very important to the royals and the pharaohs of Egypt coming from a little over 3,000 years ago. He lived during the time period of Seti I and Ramses II. And uh, they have some pretty famous tombs in the Valley of the Kings. But he was obviously very important. And I have obviously had a tremendous knowledge of the gods of old in Egypt. If the pharaohs put him in charge of putting all the artwork and symbolism and the hieroglyphic text in the tombs. But he got to make his own tomb. So obviously somebody in, who was in charge of the pharaoh's tombs would make his tomb very artistic and symbolic. And this is actually a doorway, the doorway to his tomb. And here, him and his wife are playing a game called Sonnet, which we would call a board game today, I guess, kind of like maybe chess or checkers, but it is directly associated with chapter 17 of the Book of the Dead. And there is some text below it here. And I am just going to read briefly some of what it says. Whoever knows... This book on earth, or if it is written on his coffin, he shall go out into the day in any form that he wishes and step back in against his residence unobstructed. Bread and beer shall be given to him from the offering altar of Osiris. He shall enter safely into the field of rushes and barley, and emmer shall be given to him. Then he shall know how to command like he did on earth and he shall realize each wish, like the nine gods of the netherworld, a true remedy tried a million times. And that's just a little bit of what it says on the doorway beneath him and his wife playing the game of Sinet. And here you see the western wall of the tomb, and what we know today is Anubis, the Greek name. Uh, he sits up here in this familiar posture by the two eyes of Horus. Very cool artwork here. And the reason why uh, the Anubis in this familiar pose is sitting on the Western Wall is because he is the guardian of the gates of the West and opener of the road to eternity. And this uh, collar or scarf that we see on many Anubis depictions symbolizes protection or guardianship. And that is exactly why there was a giant Anubis shrine on the western uh, bank of the Nile River, guarding the Giza necropolis. And Anubis is a name we are familiar with. That is the Greek name. But the original Egyptian or Kemetan term for Kemetian term for Anubis is listed in this tomb. I'm going to get to that in just a second. But here you see Sinejim and his wife honoring the gods here. And Osiris leads this line of gods, and Ra Horketi, 
leads this line of gods, and that is just a combination of Horus and the god Ra, maybe a depiction of gods representing the earthly plane and the underworld. But that is a good look at the western side and the symbolism and a posture of a god we are all familiar with. And on the east wall of the tomb, it's not surprising you have the god at the time representing the rising and the traveling of the sun. Ra Horaketi, a tomb, lord of the two lands. And it says Keper, who is in his bark. And the journey of the sun across the sky during uh, the daylight hours is kind of representing the life of Sinejim. And uh, you notice here they have two baboons on either side, in either side of the bark here representing the traveling of the sun and the baboons were put because ancient Egyptians thought that they admired or were sending out adoration to the sun when they howled and barked at dawn and dusk. They thought there was an adoration of the sun and that was symbolic of why the baboons are put on either side of the sun in its journey. But down here is Sinejim and his wife entering the afterlife and it is a prosperous time they are in the fields of elcyon which i think is a representation of orion and they lead a prosperous life and just imagine living in the dry arid uh, area around the nile river they imagine the afterlife to be prosperous with many things growing and water abundant just thought i would show you that and here is a little more of a look at the tomb of Sinejim. And there is some text on the walls, and it is related to the Book of the Dead. And Anubis recites in one part that Sinejim comes before Osiris and is received by the gods of the Duat. And then the god Mat recites, He is not to be turned away when he comes to the doors of the Duat, the Osiris, servant in the place of truth to the west of Waset, Sinejim, vindicated and that is a little bit of a text on the walls and all has to do with a journey to the afterlife and on the ceiling of the tomb there is a reference to osiris and listed after osiris is attributes and epithets of osiris and i think it speaks greatly to the original god of giza the one who had the shrine before the pyramids and this is great proof that what we know of the Sphinx was originally what we know today as Anubis. And this is how Osiris is referred to on the ceiling text. It says, Osiris Wenifer Kentiamentiu. And Kentiamentiu is what we know today as Anubis. And if these are listed after the Osiris name, and these are epithets and attributions of Osiris. It means Osiris was of Kentiamentiu, this ancient name for Anubis. And I have stated in previous videos that around 5,000 years ago, the main god of Giza shifted from Anubis to Osiris. And this name of Osiris is just further proof of that. And after this name, Osiris Wenifer Kentiamentiu, it says, eldest son of Geb, greatest of the five primordial gods, father of all the gods of eternity, lord of the sacred land. And the fact that Kentiamentiu, or what we know of as Anubis, his name is attached to that, is further proof he was the original god of Giza, and there was a large shrine of him sitting on the Giza plateau, just like in the posture of Anubis that I showed you from this tomb. But now we are going to go on to another tomb. Now before I show you this tomb of the next guy here, I just want to mention that the only tools found in Sinejim's tomb that were associated with the construction of it were a right angle, a cubit rod, and a plumb level. Those are the only things found related to the construction. But this next tomb is the tomb of Peshedu. And he also had the title of Servant in the Place of Truth 
as did Sinedrim, and he also lived during the time of Seti I and Ramsay II, and this is his tomb. And the entrance to his tomb, of course, you have Anubis in this familiar pose on his shrine guarding the tomb. And the reason why he put this in his tomb is he knew that uh, the tombs of pharaohs all had this in their tomb, and the only intact tomb that was ever found, this artifact was guarding it. Anubis on his shrine, and it's said in Tut's tomb that this was guarding the gates of heaven and the box coffin of Orion, exactly why it's in tombs of pharaohs and important people all over Egypt. And the reason why he is referred to on his shrine is because the ancient Egyptian texts, in the most ancient texts, refers to Anubis on his shrine. And of course, the shrine, the shrine in Egypt, is what we know today as the Sphinx. But this is a very intricate tomb here. And I'm just going to show you a few more pictures of it here. Now here is one of the walls in Peshato's tomb. And from the text on the walls, we know a little bit about the life of Peshato and his father. I believe his name was Menon, and he worked on the building of the Temple Amun at uh, what we know as Luxor today. So a little bit of his life is given in the text on the tomb walls. But here we have, this is Peshedu right here, beneath the eye here. And the symbolism is rich. And this, I believe, refers to the lighting of the lamp to Osiris from the Book of the Dead. And here on this side of the tomb, we have a falcon god. You might think this is Horus, but what this says, this is actually Ptah, Sokar, Osiris. And by this time in Egyptian history, the gods' names have been hyphenated and extended, as you can tell there. And maybe the reason why Ptah is associated with uh, Osiris in this depiction is because Ptah, Back in ancient Egypt, these awards were given to the greatest artisans. Statues of Ptah, probably where our Academy Awards came from. Just wanted to mention that. And underneath that representation of Ptah Sokar Osiris, you have this here. Let me go over to a little bigger picture. But this is a pretty famous scene coming from tunes of the Theban necropolis. But here is Peshedu drinking the sacred waters underneath a palm tree with what appears to be dates on it. But this is in reference to chapter 12 of the Book of the Dead and quenching, or the waters that quench the fires of the underworld. Just wanted to show you that. Also, we have this, and I know these pictures aren't very clear, but we have Peshedu and his wife, and they are on a boat here, and this is in reference to the pilgrimage on the boat to Abydos. And here they have a daughter, it looks like, on board with them. And I believe they had as many as five sons and daughters. And here is a look at the ceiling of the tomb of Peshedu. And on the ceiling are some of the most famous gods of Egypt. And on this side, you can't see, but Hathor is right here. Then Ra Horaketi, the combination of Horus and the god Ra. Here we have Neith, Geb, Anubis, and Wepawat, who was also a jackal god. And then on the other side here, we have the gods Osiris, Isis, Nut, Nephsis, Seraquet, Anubis, and Wepawat depicted on the ceiling, and these tombs were all about uh, the life and the journey after death to the afterworld, and it is definitely related to the Book of the Dead. The Book of the Dead texts are on the walls, and the symbolism is rich. These people knew what they were doing when they built their own tombs. These were craftsmen of some of the greatest tombs coming from the Valley of the Kings, and uh, I just hope you thought this was interesting. These are the tombs of the nobles coming from Deir el Medina, near present-day Luxor, located on the western shore. In the west represented the land of the dead. 
Hope you thought this was interesting. You have a nice day.